So, in this video, we're going to see more applications and applied problems. Um, this one is centered all about quadratic functions. And the only mathematical, there's really no new mathematical concepts here. You just have to real, uh, remember, um, one is what, how, how, to, how to build, uh, how, how to model things using functions, which we've already done. And as far as quadratic functions, we're really, in these examples, we're going to be trying to maximize and minimize something. So uh, when that something is modeled by a quadratic function, we know how to find its maximum and minimum. We look at the vertex and we find the vertex formula by just using this formula uh, for the x-coordinate, x equals negative b over 2a. So the work here will just be coming up with a quadratic function to model this situation. Um, so we're going to be looking at five examples. This first one is a, uh, a revenue problem. It's uh, where you have a relationship between the price of an item and the quantity or the number of items sold given by x. And it's a, there's a relationship given by p equals negative one six x plus 100. And you want, you're asked to find the price and the quantity that generates the maximum revenue and to find what that revenue is. Now, you'll notice that this P, when look at the equation, that's, that's a linear function, but that's not the function we're asked to maximize. We're asked to find the revenue function. So we first need to find the revenue function. And remember that revenue is the product of, of the price times the number of items sold. Okay, well the price is this, negative 1 6x plus 100, and the number of items sold, that's the quantity, is, that's x. Right, so um, now to just to show you, this is a quadratic function. This, we can distribute the x, and this will be negative 1 6 x squared plus 100x. And we can see that this, will, this is now a quadratic function, and where a is negative 1 6, and b is 100, and c is 0. It will have a maximum because if we were to graph graph the this function, it would be a parabola that would open down. So it does have a maximum, which is what we want, and the maximum is going to be at minus b over two a. So that will be minus one hundred over two times negative one six. Okay, and on your calculator, this turns out to be positive three hundred. All right, so now that, what, is, what does this represent? This represents the value of x, right? And what does x represent? x represents the uh, number of items sold, right? So whatever this item is, we, wanna, we want to sell 300 items, okay? So we want, uh, we have a maximum when x is 300. And then the price, so, so this would be the quantity. And then the price uh, we get, we go back and use this formula. So it's negative 1 6 times 300 plus 100. And this is negative 50 plus 100, which is 50. Okay, so the price is $50. Okay, so that's our price. Okay, so we generate... Um, we generate the, uh, the maximum revenue by, by selling 300 items at $50 per item. And what the actual revenue? Well, we can plug them in, in here or we can just multiply these two numbers. Um, ideally, we should, well, we can always get it by plugging into the function that we just created. So this is negative 1 6 times 300 squared plus 100 times 300 and when you compute this this turns out to be 
uh, $15,000. So that, that's the, the maximum revenue that we can get. Okay. So this is the type of thing that we are, uh, will be doing. We want to come up with a function, modeling function, and then we want to maximize or minimize it. Okay. Which we can do as long as our function is, is a quadratic function. Okay, for the second example, we have a thousand feet of fencing available to enclose a rectangular area with three subdivisions, as shown. As shown. Sorry. Another typo. I'll find the dimensions x and y that give the largest area, and what is that area? Okay, so. We have, the, we have these three, here are the three subdivisions. We're using the fencing not only to use, get to create the perimeter, but also to create these two subdivisions here. So um, we have two things. We have, our, we, have, we have the area is obviously going to be the uh, length times width. So the area will be x, y, and the amount of fencing that we, but we, we want to write this as a function of x. Well, we have to write y as a function of x first. And to do that, we need to use this 1,000 feet here. And we can see that there are going to be a total of six sides that we add together. We have y plus y plus x plus x plus x plus x. Okay, that's going to have to equal the total amount of fencing we have, which is 1,000. So this is, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times x plus 2 times y is 1,000. And we can solve for y. We can subtract 2x, for, uh, 4x from both sides. Divide by 2. And so y is 500 minus 2x. And so our area function, call it A, is going to be x times 500 minus 2x. Okay. Which is, when we distribute, this is minus 2x squared plus 500x. Okay, one, one thing here um, about domains. Yes, it's true that we could plug any number in for x we, that we wanted to. Um, but obviously, in terms of this context of this problem, um, you know, obviously x is limited by this amount of fencing that we have. So, we, if they ask you what's the practical domain, it wouldn't necessarily be all number, all real numbers. But um, we're, we're not going to really talk about that too much about what a, you know, a practical domain versus a, the actual domain. So, um, this is the area function. Uh, it's a quadratic function where a is negative 2. B is 500, and again, C is 0. So negative B over 2A is going to be minus 500 over 2 times negative 2. That's 500 divided by 4, which is 125. And remember, this is X, the value of X. Okay, the, all right. And then Y is going to be what well we can just plug 125 into here so this will be 500 minus 2 times 125 and that will be 250. okay so to maximize our area we let x be 125 feet y be 250 and to find what the actual area is well we can basically go back and since we know what x and y is, we can just multiply them, and, the, 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 and we get the area will be 125 times 250, which turns out to be 31,250 uh, square feet. Okay. And we should probably use units here, too. All right. So that's how we find out we find the area. Again, 
we lucked out because in this situation uh, we have a quadratic function. And in fact, you can you can you can do a number. It doesn't really matter how many subdivisions you have. You can you you'll always you can you'll get a different function, but it will still be a quadratic function.